We are CEOs, executives, educators, and professionals from all sectors of society who support the global expansion of betterment in the world through joy and joyly. I'm your host, Cheryl Lynn, founder of the Chair of Joy Experience. Together, we have developed the World Council of Joy, and our council invites CEOs and innovators from impactful organizations to the Joyly podcast. We showcase how generous, bold, and fully engaged they are in their work and what a culture of joy is to them. Good day. Cheryl Lynn here again with Joy Lee. We have another amazing uh, podcast and our motto again is life expansion through experience. So we get to have the experience of having Caitla Methvin on our show today. And uh, Caitlin, welcome. First of all, you're calling in from Beverly Hills. Is that right? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm <laughs> it's a uh... It's, that's, it's so great to be here this, this morning. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. So I've been really busy getting to know you because the world is uh, filled with conversations of Kayla around the world, and you've been very, very busy. So I have a little bit different flair, but before we get started, I wondered if you could tell everybody what makes an influencer impactful, first of all. And then um, a little bit about your background, and then I want to get into more some of the juicy questions. Okay. Well, I think what makes an influencer impactful really through our Instagram, you know, is really showing, you know, the different aspects of like what you're interested in. And, you know, I feel like it's like almost like your own personal diary. You know, yeah. instead of writing it, we kind of show it through through photos. And my Instagram is full of lingerie and it's full of me um, with my charity work and activism. It's it, You can see me with other girls in different varieties of diversity. And you can see me, you can see different articles about me, about my lingerie and um, a lot of Getty images, what places I'm going to, what I'm into, where I like to go out in LA and uh, when I'm in Vegas or if I'm here or there, you know? So it's kind of like a diary of following me around and and looking at my clothes and everything that's like fun and girly I guess you know in a way some people are more passionate about food in a certain way people like sports and I just think being an influencer is really impactful because it's literally when I feel a certain way or if I want to make a statement I literally write it on my story and I have over 12,000 views um and people commenting back and for example um if I feel a certain way about something you For example, uh, how Black Lives Matters happened last year, you know, it really, you know, was something that was impactful throughout the entire world. You know, I wrote a little comment about it on my story that touched, you know, 20,000 people, you know, and it just, you know, it's a great way to express yourself on a platform and have people listen to your voice in a certain way. Yes. And I wanted to start with that instead of your background, which is fashion designer, Harris, CEO, influencer, just you've been around the world. I listened to your story, your 14 year old, you know, self getting to Paris and just all the things you went through with the masquerade ball and, you know, what kind of diversity and obstacles you had to get through to who you are as an artist today. And to me, that's what your whole lifestyle brand is about and why you're an influencer. So it's about showing up authentically, if I'm correct, and also showing people what it is to live joy on a daily basis, which is what I love to talk about. So would you agree with all of that? I would absolutely agree. You know, my life started off very differently. Uh, for for those of you um, in Wisconsin who don't know my background, I'll just give you guys a brief, a brief uh, bio. You know, I was born in LA. My mother was very ill um, and she passed away when I was 14. And I went, I never knew my father. So I went to um, move to France to live with my father at this point. And I didn't speak French. My mom had just passed away. It was very difficult, very emotional for me. And I ended up in a city where, you know, there was so much culture and fashion and food and everything was beautiful. Um, I don't know how it is in Wisconsin, but in LA, not all our streets are beautiful everywhere we go. Um, And it just really inspired me create like, very creative, creatively, you know, I, I originally wanted to be a lawyer and I ended up being a fashion designer, kind of the other side of the spectrum. And I never really pictured myself out of all, all the hardships of living with my father and, and living in France. I never really ever thought to myself, Oh, you're going to be on the cover of a magazine. Like, Oh, you're going to have a Wikipedia one day. Oh my God. You're going to have 2 million Instagram followers. I never saw that ever in my future. 
I don't think any 14 year old girl who doesn't speak French who arrives in the middle of the suburbs of Paris would ever say, I'm going to be a known fashion designer worldwide and make lingerie and pose on the covers of all these magazines wearing my own lingerie. And, uh, you know, we don't just dream of that. I think my, I think my dream as a little girl, I think, I believe when I lived with my father was I just really wanted peace in my life and, you know, joy. And, um, I, I found it, but I, it's definitely been a, it's definitely been a journey of turns. And let me tell everyone without hardships, there is no joy Yes, um, without going through the steps every single day of, uh, of all these, um, challenges and, and, and tragedies and, and difficulties that there is no joy. So, so you have to always believe in yourself and never let yourself down, you know, and, and when there always, there's an answer that's no, I always take the door that's going to say yes. And I think a lot of people need to understand that not everything is made for everyone, um, in life, you know, and it doesn't mean it's a no, it's just redirecting you. Cause I've had a lot of people, doors, things, everything say no to me and it would always let me down. But then I found more joy and more laughter and more happiness in another way. And it led me to, to being more successful. You really have to just trust in God's hand and the path that you're led on. Wow. So much there. Thank you. First of all, for being an incredible gift that you are and just to give you and to be your, your be present. That's what I hear you absolutely being present and allowing your energy into the world, I think that you are just a gift. And I I feel like you know that. And so that's partly why you get to be a joyful human being and that you found your peace. So my question is, how do you do that on a moment to moment, day by day basis? Because you said that, that you work at it intentionally, Mm -hmm. and it leads to more success. So is there a plan of action or intention? Or is it just... Mm -hmm. Sorry to cut you off. but no, No, it was trial and error, really, and time no one wakes up and is a professional yoga teacher. No one wakes up and is a professional meditating for three hours nonstop. No one wakes up and is grounded. It's a lot of trial and error and learning and moving in that direction and learning from your mistakes. People who have um, learned to be grounded and learned from their mistakes, I think it, it takes, I hate to say this, it takes time, patience, and age. It's really that, you know? It doesn't come, it's not like you're you're 18. It's like, yeah, I know how to be grounded. Yeah, I totally get it. No, it took me a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of incidents to be like, okay, that's not going to work for me. So maybe I shouldn't be doing this. And being present is realizing within your own body what works for you and what doesn't. And I think you know, when, what, when you realize these, these types of things, what works for you and what doesn't is you can also see the reaction of other people and the success of what you've done. So for example, if you realize that in this situation, that getting a certain amount of hours of sleep, that meditating for a certain amount of time, that exercising and eating healthy for a certain amount of, of, of hours or, or having a strict diet or reading the Bible or whatever it is that your higher calling or power is, whatever you find works for you, keep going at it. That's what I do. Uh, I'm going to, you know, tell everyone a little secret. You know, this has nothing to do with meditating. I get massages on a daily basis (laughs) because it works for me. And people are like, huh, how many massages do you get? And I'm like, well, I try and at least go like three times a week, you know, and, and they're like, why? And I'm like, because I carry so much energy, so much energy is inside of me that I just have to like, let it, let it out. You know, I take sea salt baths, dead sea salt baths, because it like, it lets go of all my negative energy. You know, I like incense because I notice it works for me and just the smell keeps me grounded, you know, um, you know, there are certain things that just work for me in a certain way. And when I notice it works for me, I stick at it. When I know it doesn't work for me, when I don't like something, I'm like, okay, this isn't working. This is not going to make me have more progress. I get rid of it. So these are some little cheating points as honestly as go get a massage. Honestly, it resets your body. <laughs> I really, really love that you shared that. And, you know, you were on a magazine with $14 million worth of diamonds. You were talking 
uh, under 40, your LA fashion of the week, you know, you've got your own TV show on and on and on and on, um, which is so spectacular. But what I hear you saying, and what I would love for everyone else to hear what you're saying is to no matter where you are in your life or status quo or where you come from, that there's an opportunity to to sort of increase your levels of consciousness, no matter where you are, is it just an opportunity to stop, still yourself and get clear about what's important to you? And a massage works. <laughs> yeah, no, no it, it, not even the massage. I mean, it could be traveling. It could be, it could be going yeah. to a museum. It could be culture. You know, sometimes when I feel uninspired, it could be simply just me um, going to Barnes and Nobles and looking to like looking at a fashion book, you know, at different sketches of what's like come out from other designers or, you know, um, sometimes what also really inspires me is views. Like I love to have a drink, like a glass of wine and look at views like at the beach, at the ocean, at the mountains, because yeah. it calms and grounds me. Um, 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 you know, so that's always something really lovely to do is also to treat yourself. And, you know, there's no age, there's no time, there's, there's no, there's to, to keep growing with the progress of wanting to ground yourself with the levelness. Um, there's, the, the, there's no time frame. You just slowly learn it, you know, and, and treating yourself is really important too. I think a lot of people forget to do that. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't cost money either to, to treat yourself. It could be simply just walking, you know, uh, it could be simply walking in the park, you know, um, or taking your pet out or, or, or just, um, cooking a really nice inspiring meal, you know, with some nice music on. Um, these are also other ways of meditating, um, that I found because I'm definitely not a meditator that sits down for three hours in silence. I cannot do that. I'm just going to be honest to everyone in Wisconsin. There's no way I could ever do that. I, I move too much. Uh, I, I get, I get, you know, I start, you know, moving around and shaking and I'm just like, no, okay, this is not working. So I meditate in other ways. Like I, I love to cook. I like to make beautiful salads and I keep posting them on, on my stories. Um, I love to go grocery shopping. I'm like, oh, what is this? Or I love to go to grocery stores that I've never been to, like Italian or French ones, because I like to look at different foods and products and olive oils. And so there are different ways of meditating of what soothes you and your soul that doesn't cost so much money um, that allows you to even just like being with a friend of yours and having a simple uh, cup of coffee is a form of meditation because you are letting out your feelings, you're letting out you're what, what, what's bothering you inside and you're, you're doing it in a very productive, um, and very, um, what's the word a constructive matter. And, and these are forms of meditation. It's living a peaceful life under, under certain circumstances that you don't have to go above and beyond. You do not have to go do yoga at 6am. We don't have to join the 5am club. We don't have to do <laughs> all these crazy things. Yes. I mean, great. I mean, I would love to be part of the 5am club, but you know, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And every, everything you're describing is easy for people to tap into. We it's have easy. It's really easy. You know, I mean, even the, <laughs> the simpleness of brushing, sometimes I'll just sit and brush my hair and I'll just be like, this is great. Just brushing my hair and, um, just simple things like that. It makes, it works it out or organizing your closet. Uh, there's different, really just so many different forms of it. It really do what makes you happy, but don't forget to treat yourself once in a while. So on a scale of one to 10, where would you say that the world is sitting in that understanding of finding your own peace and joy on a day-to-day -day basis? Oh, geez. Um, <laughs> this is really not the right time to say that. <laughs> well, I feel like after COVID, after so many people passing away, I mean, we had two, two point something, I think it was 2.4 million people pass away worldwide and over, um, 11 million people, um, losing employment. Um, I don't think a lot of people are very steady right now. I mean, there are 7 billion people on the earth, but if we take in consideration all those souls and people that have passed away and all the heartache that it's brought to families and friends and, and lovers, um, I would have to say that it's very hard right now um, during this time to be grounded. We are financially stressed. We are politically stressed. We are, we are stressed mentally. We have anxiety right now. People are looking for what is my next job? What is my next meal? How am I going to feed my children? Um, people are getting divorced after what just happened with COVID. Um, and uh, people, some people got married, you know, and some people 
didn't. And some people had to look, we had a baby boom, uh, which was beautiful. But then a lot of people realized that they didn't want to stay with their significant other. So there's a lot of energy right now that is just mis- mis- misconflicted. It's, it's, it's misunderstood. And I don't think right now, the energy is, is, is really aligned with energy of self ground, because right now, how can we be grounded in a society where we we can't even financially take care of ourselves or our mental, our mental state of health, you know, and this has only been two years after COVID and we're only getting our feet off the ground right now. I think that's, that's, that's really challenging. So if I had to, give a number for America, for the USA, because I don't know about the other countries because I've been here during the pandemic, I would say that America's hurting a lot and um, we're crying. And I said, I would have to say we have teardrops falling down our eyes and I would have to give it below a five. Like I would say probably a little hope's coming back, maybe a 4.5. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say that we're at the happiest point, you know, I mean, I've lived my life and I've seen, I've seen when, you know, I've seen when LA has been the most beautiful Beverly Hills, like the, the park is green, the waterfalls are, are going, the birds are out now. I mean, if we drive through Beverly Hills, the homeless are everywhere, you know, because they have nowhere to go. It's, it, it it's coming to a point where the, the, the homeless amount of, of people, it's, it's, it, it's, it's atrocious. Like we need to do more. And what people want to do is, is pass laws and, and, and kick them out, which I, I understand it to a certain degree. Like, yes, no one wants to have a homeless person sit outside their, their home, but also it's like, well, well, where, where do you want them to go at the end of the day? You know? So it's, we are, we are on a path where we are, we, we need to rebuild that strength that America has. And we have it because we've gone through so much. We've gone through 9-11. We've gone through 2000. Was it, when, when, when was the crash of the market? Was it 2011? No, not 2013, correct? 18. 18. Yeah. Uh, we've gone through so much in the past 10 years. And, you know, I've just seen America rise again and rise and, and just be the strongest country out there. And all our troops going out there and the wars we've gone through and everything and the families fighting through. And we've always risen at the top of our status, but COVID has really brought us harshly down. And it, and, and me too, it's, it's, it's brought, it's brought everyone and affected everyone. So I think a little bit more time, it's, it, it's really time that heals, but you know, what? we're, we're a strong ass country and um, I'm proud to be American 100%. And I know we are going to raise it within one year. I give us one year. And I know that this is going to be a bomb ass country again, where everyone's going to fly in and want to go on vacation to as they did before. So that's why I always say to the rest of the world, screw you guys. You guys don't like America, whatever. We're the best. We're number one. Our passport says Liberty justice for all. And we, we have the best of everything. Just right now we're a little low, you know, spiritually, but guess what? When you're, when you're down low, you can only go up. That's what my mom always used to say. So so do you think, thank you for all of that. That was brilliant. I appreciate you um, taking a minute and calling our country out as it is and where we're at and what's next. And I think that a 4.5 is probably pretty accurate. Yeah. Um, of course, everybody is all over the place. I have a process called the chair of joy and there's there's lots of meditation um, practices and, and simple ways to improve your vibration on a daily basis. But I'm wondering if you could go through the process with me very quickly, if I would share it with you. Sure. No, of course. Yes. Let's, uh, I would love to. Are you at home right now? Yes. I'm actually sitting. Um, I'm just sitting on my couch right now and, uh, I'm yep. With my legs crossed right now, actually in a meditating (laughs) position. So this is perfect. (laughs) <laughs> so my question was, if you could point in your house to a chair that you could call your chair of joy, would it be the one you're sitting on or would it be a different one? Funny enough, when I'm very angry, um, a little <laughs> secret for everyone, I lay down on the floor on my back. Okay. Um, because I, that's how I ground myself. Um, I like to align my spine and my body straight and look at the ceiling. Okay, perfect. So let's imagine, maybe you can even do this if you'd like, but lie, lie down on your couch or floor or whatever you want and 
call this your chair of joy. Okay. So the idea is. Oh, so you really want me to get on the floor? Okay. Hold on one second. I mean, you, don't, you don't have to, but. Oh, no, I want to. This is too much fun. <laughs> hold, on, hold on. Let me get on the floor. Okay. No, a second. Let me just put the computer on the floor. Okay. I'm really, so doing, I'm really doing this right now. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, absolutely. If we're going to do something, let's do it right. Yep. So All the right, idea on the floor and okay. I'm meditating and sta staring at the ceiling right now. Good. Okay. So the purpose of all of this, and I came up with this process about, I don't know, on and off 25 years ago and sort of just been fine tuning. I've worked with a couple of neuroscientists. So it's some LA, NLP items as long as, uh, as well as a gentleman who works with um, a Hallmark over the years. So it's very, um, it's, it's got a lot of um, substance to it, but it's very easy that a 10 year old can do it. So the idea is that when you see your chair of joy, or you're looking at your couch or the deck out on the the chair out on the deck, or you're thinking about the floor where you are currently, it's your chair of joy. It's a place where you can go, oh, let me just get away from everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm actually really calm right now. <laughs> Yay. All right. So here's what I want you to do. So I want you to just to take a couple of deep breaths while you're laying there. This is not necessarily a closed eye experience, but I like to say ocean wave. So you're near the ocean. So you know, an ocean wave is six seconds in. So with me, and then six oh. seconds out. And I want you to tell me one thing that you can see. What can you physically see where you are right now besides the ceiling? <laughs> I see that I'm in Hawaii um, with my mother looking at dolphins. Okay. And what, what do you hear physically? Like, do you hear the ocean or what do you hear? <laughs> um, um, I hear the air and the breeze of the palm trees. I don't know. I'm picturing myself when I lived in Hawaii. It's bringing me back to my childhood with my mother. Yeah. I'm just seeing the dolphins and when we used to sit on the beach. And it's, yeah. it's relaxing. It's just bringing me to a place of childhood yeah. and joy. Yes. Yeah, so the, the first part is just to get your yourself grounded. Look around what you can see, the pictures on the wall, what you can hear, the wind and the breeze or whatever. Um, and then a couple more deep breaths. And as you're doing this, I want you to tap into one of your most favorite memories of joy. So somewhere where you could have been a little girl or yesterday or this morning or anywhere in between when you're like, oh my gosh, this felt so joyful. What's the first memory that came to, comes to mind? You kind of already described a couple, but did something else sort of land there? Yeah, I don't think it's, it's rated XXX, so I'm not going to say it. So I'm going to go to my second memory. <laughs> Oh, no, but you know what? I'll, oh, share it. It. <laughs> I'll tell I'll share it. It was when I was with my first boyfriend and uh in Paris, and it was the 14th of July, and it was the actually the day I discovered he bought me lingerie, and that's what got me into lingerie. And you know, we're in his bed, and the next morning when we woke up, it's the 14th of July, which is like the fourth of July for America. And I just remember him holding me and telling him he loved me. Oh, so, it was, it, yeah, it's a personal moment, but you know, I just remember so much joy because after my mom passing and my dad, and that was the first, it, a couple, I was, you know, it was a couple years after it was like my first moment of real joy of hearing someone say that they loved me for me. And that was just so cool and, 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 and amazing. And just, and he was my first love too. So I guess it's cheesy, but you know. I look oh, back at it. I really wish I could relive these moments, you know, just because I look back like 15 years later, you're just like, wow, you know, I want to relive my teens again. They were so great sometimes. And then sometimes I look at them like never, ever would I ever relive it. <laughs> but so that moment was really special for me. I love it. I appreciate that you took a minute to share something personal. If you could just take a couple more deep breaths and let that moment resonate, sort of see his face and feel his arms around you and you know just all the hoopla of the 14th of July and sort of the the, the um the day itself and then one more deep breath I want you to tap time in another place so another time another place another area another time when you said this is really working out for me this moment this is a moment of joy okay I would have to I'm getting I'm getting, I was at Vivian Westwood, a Place Vendôme, um, 
it's it's in the ninth district in Paris, and this was like my first fashion show for um, when I was graduating um, my bachelor's degree. And um, I was doing my fashion show for my Westwood, and uh, I remember, um, you know, just when my clothes came out, that they were just clapping so hard, and people were standing up, and I really felt my moment of purpose that moment. That was a okay. moment of pure joy. Pure joy, I feel it. So think of that moment again. Let it just resonate from your head to your toe. See all the clothing, the dresses, and hear the claps and the laughters and just you know everyone appreciating you and sort of let both of those memories just resonate from your head to your toe like just let them linger there just feel the vibration and then if you could come up with one word Kayla that describes both of those feelings or both of those memories what would that word be it could be faith or love or hope or something different what's the first word that comes to mind destiny Ooh, destiny and if you could put this destiny, this thing that you have that's so full of joy, this this powerful feeling that you have found your destiny into some kind of container, a physical container, what would that container be? Being a fashion designer, I can't wait to hear this answer. <laughs> oh, boy. I don't want to go to my Pandora, Pandora box in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And then, I, and then I got to share something after this because I had a moment when when I, when I was uh, breathing uh, a flashback that I got to share. Okay. Uh, I would use a container. I don't really have. I don't really have a container except my jewelry containers. I would put it probably in my lingerie drawer. Okay. That's, <laughs> That's where I put it because I find like my glam room and my, and my, and my, where all my makeup and my wigs and my <laughs> clothes are, I find it to be like my, sh my, my sanctuary, you know, like I go in there and I can breathe. I'm like, ah, pretty things. I feel better. <laughs> Perfect. So we're putting this destiny into this lingerie drawer and you and me are going to go on a trip and we're going to go, let's go to Paris. Why not? I was Usually I say New York or Bali or something, but let's go to Paris today. We're on, on a plane. <laughs> We're on a plane and we're, we're out landing and we're getting off and there's uh, 3,000 executives and, and, and designers and many people from your audiences over the years. And they don't get this thing that you're talking about. This, we have, the, you, we have your, uh, your uh, lingerie drawer with us, by the way. And they don't get this um, destiny, this level of joy that you have. What would you say to them so that they could hear your message, like really hear you? I would just say that God has a plan for everyone and enjoy every single moment that you live and be present in it because that was, that's the script that was written for you. Even though that, you know, God gives us the will of choice, it's also a play on destiny, that it, that it was your destiny and your script. And just to see how beautiful it is and to have that personally for you and you always in your heart and your mind. And then to be able to share it with people is a real beautiful thing. So that's how I would probably describe it to people. And if they don't quite understand how to live in every moment of every day, like you're saying, what would you say then? I would say to them, um, that's a good question. Mm. Keep it. Yeah. I, I would just say to them, live your fucking life. Your life, capital Y-O-U-R, right? Yeah, live your fucking life. Go for it. Don't <laughs> don't put barriers. Don't put bars. Don't say no. Don't say maybe, if, what. You know, don't put yourself in dangerous situations. I'm not saying that. But yeah. live your life and don't, life is so short. Don't, don't say no to something. Don't judge a book by its cover. Go for it. Go for the opportunities. Go for the, for the lust. Go for the, Go for the moment. Go, go, go. When someone says, let's do this, let's do that. Go for any opportunity of work and, and creativity or whatever. Just go and do it. You right. know, that that's what I would say to them. And, and don't and don't don't take a second guess, because if you didn't do it, you would never know. Brilliant. I got all that down and you're hopefully a motivational speaker somewhere along the way, but that was great. And last question for this, and then I can let you get off, off the floor and you can finish telling me your secret moment there. But if okay. you could give this, this destiny, this, uh, excuse me, this lingerie drawer of destiny away to anyone in the world today, who would you give it to and why? 
Um, that's a that's a really good question. Um, I'd probably give it to my. I don't really have a good relationship with my father, so I don't. I would probably want to give it to him in a weird way. Maybe not the moment with my boyfriend, but I would give him the rest of the moments because I would want him to know that I've had a joyful life and that I thank you f- to him for giving me life. That's beautiful. Okay, you can get up off of your chair of joy now and get back to where oh, we were. Wow. Or just I feel so much better. <laughs> So lovely, lovely, lovely. So that's the chair of joy. And I just want you to know just real briefly before we continue on is that we took your your intangible joy, your memories that you vibrated through your body and increased your joy levels significantly, right? We did that. We increased your joy in your body. Yes. I'm feeling a lot of joy in my spine, in my head, in my toes, in my fingers. I'm feeling it. Yes. So imagine if we did that as a nation and could we raise the 4.5 to five if we all had a chair of joy and we did that a couple of times a day, like sim- oh. super simple, just like you said, it doesn't cost money. I think, I think if we did this chair of joy, I think we could raise absolutely 4.5 because we are America and we are the one and only stripes, re- uh, red, white, and blue. We can jump all the way to an eight. <laughs> Yeah, because we're powerful. Yeah, that's, that's how we roll, you know. I love it. All right, what was your moment? What was your moment there that you wanted to share that that you wanted to share? Oh, yeah. So here I am thinking, oh, this is so romantic, me and my ex. And I'm thinking, oh, God, he's married with kids now and that goddamn woman. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking today, like, I don't know, he's waking up with someone else and his kids. I'm like, well, it was back then. But now I'm like, ugh. <laughs> I guess I understand what divorce means. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Oh. I have a question about your lingerie and sort of the inspiration to kind of to create something new and exciting for festival. So that's an awesome uh, plan. I don't know if that's already been enacted, but can you tell us a little bit more about that? Because talk yeah. about livening livening up festivals and creating a new nuance or a new ambiance is just incredible. Yeah, so I'll, it's a long story, but I'm going to go ahead and share this. So in my second year, of, I went to ESMO. Um, we were all assigned to make suits, right? And it was um, kind of like our SATs, um, you would say, at the end of the year to see if we pass or not. And um, a lot of people don't know the story. So actually, you're probably the first person I'm sharing this with. Um, and this this will, this is why I lead into EDM. Um So everyone was making suits, right? Like a normal suit jacket, Italian collar, like normal, like a normal, like pockets, like just pants suits or a little pencil skirt or whatever. So I went ahead and I decided I was interning for Jean-Charles de Castel Bejac at the time that summer. And I decided, well, you know, I want to make a suit that's outrageous. And I made a suit that was blue it kind of looked like a soldier, um, a soldier um, suit, and then the then basically the bottom part was a bouquet of about ten thousand flowers, hand sewn on. And they, you know, I walked in the room and they gave me an F, straight straight up. They walked in the room and they all laughed at me, all the professors. And my inspiration was from the designer John Charles de Castel Bajac. So the designer calls my school and he goes, why were you laughing at her work? I helped her with it. <laughs> you know? Oh, there you go. And then, and literally it ended up in my, the jacket ended up in the, in the music video telephone with Beyonce wearing it. Oh my God. So it just shows you like, follow your heart and go where you want to go because you never know what's going to happen. And you know, you know, they obviously changed my grade. They gave me something like a B minus, the lowest possible, of course, because, you know, they're, they, they were they were upset that the designer called and they're like, because basically if you trashed my work, you're trashing his work. So that didn't work out so well. Um, but, you know, they all, you know, it brought so much attention. And then once it got in the music video, the school was just, you know, the principal was just like, yeah, whatever. 
it's just because it has so much bling bling and then I mean with her French accent. And I was like, no, you know why? It's because it's out there. It's good. It's fun. It's sparkly. It says something. It has a statement. It's cool. You know, um, it's not boring. You know, I, I, I don't want to wear a bra or underwear or anything that I've seen before. When I go shopping or anything, I buy things that I don't have that are collectibles, you know? I'm not going to, of course we have our daily, you know, jeans and white shirts that, you know, we, that we need, you know, but besides that, when we actually go out and go shopping or need something, I like to go out and buy something that no one has. That's me personally. I like to go to vintage shops or if it's a one piece collectible or in a small, it's just, it, there's only five pieces, you know, in the world. I want it, you know, because I'm just like, this is, this is magical. This is joy. I have a hat from Comme de Garçon that's like literally 20 years old. And I remember when I was a teenager, they gave it to me and I never took it off. You, you know, I like things like that. So um, going to EDM is like, I never ever wanted to make basic lingerie. I don't like the whole, I mean, we can do the whole lace. We can do the whole corsets with the bras and we could put satin on it and we can make it look like every other piece of lingerie out there. You know, I mean, if you want to do that, let's go for it. But I really like sparkles and I really like shiny things. And I like things that have bling bling on it. And I like things that are fun and make you happy. I like colors that make you happy. I just told, you know, my assistant today, I was like, we got to call a painter. I want to paint my house pink <laughs> lavender in certain places because I love color. I love joy. You know what I mean? And I don't want to wear boring lingerie. I'm like, how exciting is it for a guy to see you in, in a black bra and panties? Like, come on. We see that on Gap commercials. <laughs> like, you know, so when we go to EDM festivals, we're enjoying the music. We're with our friends, you know, we're, we're enjoying the moment. We're living the life, you know. Um, we're together as a family. You know, that's what I love about EDM. There's no culture. There's no politics. There's no race. There's no age. There's nothing. You know, all it is is a bunch of people together, loving each other, enjoying the music. There's no negative vibe. People pay so much money. They pay so much money to get on the planes, to rent villas, to rent um, hotel rooms, to get these tickets, to get upstate tickets, you know, to see these DJs and live that moment. And I think it's important as well, you know, that I saw that there was no niche market in this area. I saw that the, like people were wearing like, you know, fishnet stockings with, with, with stickers on their nipples. And I was like, okay, well, that doesn't look very good. Um, I was like, no one's hit this market yet. And I really, really want to hit the market in a way where, you know, they can celebrate not only the culture, the life, the music, but also they could look good while doing it, you know, at an affordable price. You know, I don't expect everyone to go buy thousand dollar lingerie because, you know, when you're raving and you're at EDM festivals, you get sweaty. You obviously you're jumping around a lot. You know, that's why all my stuff is, you know, made for jumping. It's made to get worn and torn. You can wash it over a thousand times. Um, it's like even double padded, underwired to support the woman's, you know, our breasts. Um, the underwear is double, even fitted. Um, like I really made this collection so you could rave in it. It's really made for that. It hasn't caught on very much yet because uh, there's a lot of marketing I still have to do. And because, you know, COVID's just reopened. But it is made for people to jump for three days and nothing moves on your body. If you want to wash it, uh, if you've been in mud or rain or whatever, wash it for 20 times. It's still good to go. And it's affordable. That's what I like about it. And it's fun. It's loud. It's like I can see you a mile away. That's what's so cool about it. You know, it's like it, it, it's like I'm excited to put it on. You know, I'm excited to wear, you know, my little bolero jacket with a bunch of, you know, different colors and a silver sparkly um, tanga with um, a bow bra. You know, it, it, it's cool. It's freaking cool. And you can mix and match it. It's not just for EDM. You can wear it if you want to wear it with like some suit pants. You can wear one of my corsets with the suit pants and a jacket. You can wear that out to a business meeting. Let's say you and your girlfriends are going out for dinner. You could wear my dominatrix bra. Uh, that's black, which is actually on my stories right now. I wore it with a Fendi dress yesterday while filming. Um, you can mix and match it into everyday life. And you know what? These are fun pieces. They're not, it's not for the average gal. You know, you have to be a raver. You have to be out there. You have to have a big personality. You have to be daring. 
You know, this is not this is not for someone who just wants comfortable lingerie. If you want to do that, then you know, go to Macy's. Um, <laughs> if you if you if you actually want to, you know, be have that um, empowering woman sensuality and have a great time, well, then go to Madam KQ, and then you know, we'll we'll see the difference. And that's your website, Madam K. Uh, Madam KQ dot com. Madam Day, Madam KQ dot com. Got it. Yeah, got I it. had to. I, I had to. I had to come up with a name. So because everything was Madam Method, and that was my couture line. So I started off with Madam K, but then I added on the Q because it, you know I just I felt like the numbers because I'm into numerology. Um, Q is a very powerful. Um, number with really great energy. So I really wanted to add that on. And it took me a couple of weeks actually to, 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 to come up with a name. Uh, I'm very into numerology and energies like that. Uh, it's very important what you, what your name is can vibrate a lot off to the public. It's just like my name. I'm actually changing it from K A I L A to K apostrophe L A all capital. Oh, I love that. Yeah, because I feel like when you're born in this world, you should choose your name. You know, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't see why my parents. I understand they gave birth to me, but like, hey, if my name's, you know, if I'm not digging my name, you know, I'm not digging my name. So, you know, you should. You, if you want to change it, go for it. If you don't, you know, it's really up to you. So, so it. So you're not out of stock, are you? This line is out and about and available. Is that correct? Right now we're out of stock on the website, but you can still go on Instagram and purchase. We have a little bit left, but the website was getting a little bit too crazy with the orders and everything. Okay. So if you log on to my Instagram at Madam, M-A-G-A-M-E, and then Methven, M-E-T-H-V-E-N, um, you can go shopping there and there's about nine pairs. Everything is under $100 and they come paired up with panties and bra. It's overnight shipping international. So um, yeah. So if you guys want to go ahead and purchase some stuff, you guys are more than welcome to. We are in the process right now of talking with a few department stores that I approve of. <laughs> like right. Kurt Siegel, you know, yep. Neiman Marcus kind of got that cool vibe to it that, you know, will take, you know, funky because it is a funky line. You know, this is not your average. Um, this is not your average line that, you know, oh, it's, this is so pretty. It's, it's, it's black Dantel with a black lace Dantel. No, the, no, this is a flashy line and it's not made for the average consumer. It's made for the consumers that want to be out there that are in, in, in EDM, in the art world, that are creative, that, that love, that love music. You know what I mean? That love, that love it. You can even go to a freaking rock and roll band and, and rock my clothes, like in the, the dominatrix set, you know, it doesn't have to just be for EDM, but it is a creative lingerie brand. It's not, it's not a lingerie brand where it's like, um, you're just going to wear it for a sexy night out in a hotel room with your, with your lover. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, you could do it with a normal lingerie brand, but I'm pretty sure my effect with my brand will do a lot more. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I just want to thank you, Kayla, for sharing this. I can't wait to continue to get to know you and hopefully um, maybe bring the actual uh, white leather broke diamond studded uh, chair of joy to Beverly Hills. I was in Malibu with it once and I've uh, been to 35 cities and over a thousand people have sat in it. And the bottom line is, is people like you and through your work are raising the vibration of joy on the planet. And that's our work. The levels of consciousness can solve societal problems when people are doing what it is that they want to do and stopping to pay attention long enough to create on a daily basis. So thank you for raising the vibration of joy with me today. Yeah, no, thank you so much. And I just, just to prove your point, actually, you know, uh, to share with people, this is a sensitive subject before we log off, you know, there have been times everyone, when I've been depressed or I have been, you know, not feeling myself very well. And I've kind of gone into low moods and you're absolutely right with the, with the, with, with the chair of joy. If you don't listen to your own voice and thoughts of what makes you happy and what you want to do, you will always be miserable. So you really have to listen to that inner part of you in your heart. So that is 100% true because I've been there and I've done that. And, and listening to myself has been the key. So whether it's laying on the floor, sitting in a chair, or however you want to do it, standing up in the shower, I 100% agree with you on that. And 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 this is the part I'm most excited. Imagine children. I don't know if you're a mom or if you have lots of kids in your in your life, but imagine a chair of joy instead of a timeout chair around the world. Can you imagine raising up 
kids in a language of joy that seems like exactly what you're saying, where, you know, they can hear themselves instead of being scolded for what's going on, right? That they can focus on what brings them joy versus what doesn't. I think that's a fantastic idea. I think that in schools, you know, I... I mean, we can start a whole nother podcast about the American <laughs> schools, but yeah, and, exactly. and the tree and, and what they're feeding them and everything. Yeah. I have a whole plan on that, but uh, I yes. don't have kids yet. I am planning on having a lot of kids, um, but no, my mother never, never hit me, but, but she used to make me write lines, you know? Like, I will not do this. You know, I will not do that for hours. Like, oh, hours God, God. My hands were hurting. Um, and I found that it wasn't as effective as if you were just to explain and take the time to explain to the child what is it isn't effective. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not for hitting children. I don't believe in it. I don't believe in laying hands on people. I'm completely against violence, 100%. And I think that if kids did actually... You know, nap time for kids when they in when they're in preschool and stuff. Um, I think we did 15 minutes in kindergarten, at least. You know, in the first grade, all the way up to eighth grade, even in high school, that they take 15 minutes out of their day because they 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 can do the American anthem every morning, so they obviously have time to meditate. So if we took 15 minutes to just sit down and listen to ourselves, you know, like I am going to pass this math test, I am going to pass my driving test. You know what? When I get home, I'm not going to fight with my mother today. You know, just, you know, simple things like that, I guess, as a teenager would think. Yeah, I think it would do a lot of good. Yeah, we don't we don't we don't really we don't really have the tools. We don't have the tools. But anyway, Kayla Methvin, I appreciate your time. I want to thank Michael Bayes for connecting us (laughs) from Raver Magazine. He is a amazing human being and helping with me with my my uh, magazine. And hopefully we can communicate again about that down the road. No, absolutely. He is absolutely amazing. I love him to death. Um, Every time I Zoom with him, I don't want to get off the Zoom because I'm having such a party. (laughs) So (laughs) it's such a pleasure just talking with you. This has actually been a fun podcast. Um, I usually don't, it's always the same topic, (laughs) the same turnaround, but this was a lot of fun, actually. This kind of, this has made me start my day really positively. (laughs) No podcaster has asked you to lay down on the floor or sit in your chair of joy yet? No. And it's like, come on, guys, be creative here. Like, like someone tell me, do something. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun to actually do things. No, I, I, I'm, a, I'm an active person and I, I like to do things. So this was, this was a really great podcast. Thank you so much. And I, and I feel all the way from here, I feel your energy entering in my mind and my heart and my soul. And I'm going to carry it throughout the day and spread it to others. Thank you for that. That means so much to me. And again, thank you for being on our show and for um, for creating this level of joy that I think is rare and um, would be pretty phenomenal if more people could feel and hear and see what you have. So I appreciate your time and uh, we'll talk again soon. And thank you everyone for listening um, to the you. podcast and we'll talk again soon. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com. <laughs>